Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Goodno Gymnasium in South Deerfield, home of the Frontier Red Hawks. Tonight, the 2019 MIAA Western Mass Boys Division III quarterfinal round matchup. Number 10, Palmer. Number two, Frontier. I'm Jeff Terrell, along with Chris Collins. Our studio producer is Dave Reno. Great regular season, Chris, for the Frontier Red Hawks. Sputtered at times. They had a couple of ugly losses, but they did get the number two seed. They get the first round by. They get number 10 Palmer coming in after a 56-44 victory against the Mahar Senators. I think that if you're Frontier, you'd be happier to see Mahar in this building tonight than Palmer because these two teams are not strangers. They have a history. In fact, Palmer very nearly beat the Red Hawks earlier this year in an independent matchup here at Goodnote Gymnasium. And Frontier has not looked sharp the last couple of times out. Now, that may very well be a different story here. It's second season. Everybody starts from scratch. They have tremendous talent. They have tremendous athleticism. But do they have the mental toughness to deal with what's going to be a very motivated Pioneer team? This is not an ordinary 10 versus 2 matchup. Absolutely. Uh, Palmer, again, the uh, game that you referenced earlier this year right here at Goodno Gymnasium. Frontier defeated Palmer by a final score of 49-42. to 42, So very much a uh, defensive type of basketball game. Frontier actually had to outscore the Panthers 18 to four in the fourth quarter to get that victory. So they were obviously having a lot of trouble. This team can shoot the lights out, Chris. They had 11 threes against the Senators in that victory in Orange. So we'll see what happens here tonight. Well, I think that Frontier's strongest play still is the front court of the Carrier Brothers, but their defense is gonna have to be sharp. They're gonna have to really jump out on the guards, not give them any chances behind the arc if they wanna win this game. Health-wise, well, you know, they're looking pretty good. Of course, they did lose one of their big men, Colin Boudreaux, early this year uh, with his uh, wrist injury. Uh, he is still not playing, of course, but everybody else appears to be ready to go. This is the time of the year where a lot of guys have uh, some nagging injuries, and usually in the wintertime you get some illnesses, but a lot of guys that, uh, I'm, that I'm personally looking for, Alex Sharp, Kalen Evans certainly would be on that list, and... Uh, also, Owen Morris. Now, these are guys that are very capable, but, again, they've had nights where it just wasn't happening. Tonight will be a night where at least two of the three will have to really get it going here. I think you're absolutely right, and I think that was one of the reasons why they lost that Greenfield game, especially in the second half. The guard play just wasn't what it needed to be. And they beat Athol to win a share of that title, so they were co-champions with Greenfield, but they probably should have won that thing outright. Yeah. We'll see what happens tonight. All right, we're getting set for Palmer and Frontier. The winner will go to the cage next week for the Final Four, the Western Mass Boys Division Three semifinals. The winner of this game will play either number three seed Narragansett out of Baldwinville. They're at home tonight against the Spartans Monument Mountain Regional out of Great Barrington. So that's the other matchup on this side of the bracket, Narragansett hosting Monument. The winner of that game plays the winner of this one, Frontier and Palmer. That game will be next week at the Cajun Amherst. We don't know which day. We don't know what time. That will all get decided with tonight's games and tomorrow night game as well. All right, we'll take a timeout here on the pregame show. We'll come back. We'll get you set. Introduction of the starting lineups, the national anthem, and the opening tip-off. Palmer and Frontier next on Bear Country 95.3. Support for FCAT's coverage of high school sports provided by Extreme Networks, customer-driven networking for your business, software-driven solutions that are agile, adaptive, and secure, extremenetworks.com. Attorney Dan Graves, Esquire. In addition to being Deerfield's town moderator, Dan is a practicing attorney. Call his Greenfield Law Office at 773-8706. Bobby C's DJ service, voted best mobile disc jockey in the valley for six years running. Book your next party now at bobbycsdjservice.com. Holiday Pizza in the center of South Deerfield. Holiday Pizza is the official pizza of Frontier Community Access Television. Webbs, America's Yarn Store in Northampton. Kathy and Steve Elkins are longtime supporters of local sports. Visit them at yarn.com. Cheslick's Market, great coffee, snacks, a full deli, and fantastic lunch specials. Across from the Common in the center of South Deerfield. Welcome to Frontier Regional School for tonight's Western Massachusetts Division III quarterfinal tournament game. Our guests this evening are the Panthers from Palmer High School. Yeah! The Hunter School of the MIAA. Thank you and welcome you to this 
game. The students participating in tonight's contest are representing their schools, their families, and themselves. Please encourage these student athletes with your personal display of support and good sportsmanship. Now, for tonight's starting lineups, for Palmer at guard, number four, Tyler Placanico. At guard, number 33, Jack Latender. At center, number 24, Chad Vegas. At forward, number 23, Joe Lombardi. Forward, number 32, Dylan Kenza. Power is coached by Ed Anderson. Now, for Frontier, at guard, number one, Alex Sharp. At guard, number 14, Owen Moss. At center, number 22, Karsten Carey. Right, win and go to the cage, lose, and it is season over. And for a senior, it is career, high school career, over. It's the tournament. The stakes are high. It's the last night of February. So February frenzy will then turn to March madness. Got to set a tone right now. If you're Frontier out of the block right now, control the pace of this game. Crucial. They've been very good at doing that most of the season. We but, saw what happened in Greenfield the other night yeah. against uh, Murdoch. Murdoch just came out and controlled the tempo. You cannot do that. You cannot allow a team to come into your house and do you like that. The Frontier has got to be ready. Pioneer, uh, Palmer in the visiting royal blue, black and white. Frontier in the familiar home whites with crimson and navy. Karsten Carey is jumping center against Joe Lombardi. The tip is bounced around and controlled by Frontier. And they'll be moving right to left here in the first half. A 30-second shot clock. We play eight-minute quarters in high school basketball. Kalen Evans on the left elbow. Top of the key, Alex Sharp. They dump it in a high post. Turnaround jumper by Carey is good from just inside the free throw That's line. That's a very good way to start. Get that guy hot in the paint. You cannot guard him when he's hot. Two-nothing Hawks. They come out in a 2-3 zone between the circles. Latender. Tyler Laplanico and a big block down low by Karsten Carey. The ball goes out of bounds. It'll stay with the Panthers, but that was a loud block. He Two gotta, good signs there. You got a taste of both Carey brothers on that block. They both went up for it. Palmer with 17 to shoot. They'll inbound on the baseline. They throw it out deep. Chad Vigos, left side, jumpers, in and out, no good. Peter Carey rips down the rebound. It's it over to Sharp. Alex takes into the front court right to Kalen Evans. Kalen's top of the key. Morse into the left corner. They dump it down low again to Karsten. Karsten turns, banks it home for nothing, Hawks. I think Carey wants to go to the cage bad. He looks like he's pumped up tonight. Blacanico walks it across the timeline. Against, uh, again, a zone defense. Actually, I think they switched up. They're now, uh, yeah, it's definitely a matchup zone. Coming through, the uh, scoop shot by the freshman, Jack Latender, no good. Karsten Carey muscling it up there with number 23, Joe Lombardi, a held ball. The arrow will favor Palmer. Well, Lombardi's a tough kid. A lot of these Palmer guys play football as well, and he's, he's a guy who definitely is not going to be afraid. He's not going to back down from Karsten Carey in the paint. Lacanico will inbound on the baseline right. Throws it out deep to Jack Latender. Throws on the left side to Dylan Tenzar, one of their big guys, and back to Placanico. Top of the key, bounce pass. Bigos launches a three that is no good. He had a big night against Mahar. That one was well off the mark. So now, a chance for Frontier to really open up a nice early moments lead here. 
Kalen Evans bounce pass into the right corner. Morse has it back to Evans. Swing it left side. They get it down low again. Karsten Carey back to Sharp for three. That is short, no good. Rebound pulled down by Lombardi. Lacanico will take it across. Ingles towards the right. Throws over there. Bigos. Dylan Tenzar puts it to the floor. Shuffle pass back to Bigos. Jack Latender, the freshman, between the circles. Shot clock down to 12. Open on the left side. Tenzar gets it in a high post. Against Carey. Sealed off. Four seconds. Forces it up. No good. Great frontier defense. That's and what you got to do. Palmer is one and done. Sharp into the front court. Takes it to the right elbow. Top of the key. Peter Carey. They swing it left to Morse. Bounce pass. Evans left corner. Shot clock at 15. Morse back to Evans on the left side. Wide open three ball. Book it. K Dog from the outside. 7 0 Frontier. Palmer, no timeout. They're going to hit Coach Ed Anderson, letting them play through it right now. But a great start for Frontier. Lombardi, right of the lane, puts it up off the glass, in in. Good job by Lombardi to find that little seam. First points of the night for Palmer. 7 2 Frontier, five minutes to play here. In the opening half, we have a scoreboard update from Pioneer coming up in just a moment. Morse, left corner bounce pass to Evans. Evans puts it through the floor, back to Morse, beyond the arc. Karsten Curry at the top of the key of all places, left side to Morris. Uh, takes it in, Owen lost the handle. Kalen Evans goes to the floor to get it. We have another held ball, and Frontier will keep it on the possession arrow. Well, that was Klinkanico there, got a hand on that ball as he was going through, just upset him enough to knock it loose, but Frontier will keep it. Morse inbounds it to Karsten Carey deep on the left. Top of the key to Evans. Right side to Owen Morse. Fakes to three. Drives all the way through. Double clutch got blocked on the way up. A clean block. Palmer looks to run. Latender though lost it. Out of bounds. Back to Frontier. Yeah, he didn't lose it by himself. That was Peter Carey. Did a great job getting a hand in there and knocked it loose. Good job. Owen Moore throw in right at the scores table. 7-2 Frontier. We're about halfway through this opening quarter. Western Mass Boys D3 quarterfinal round matchup. Here in South Deerfield, Kale and Evans at the foul line, left side to Sharp, back to Evans, Peter Carey takes it, foul line, right side, Morse, open three, front rim no good, Karsten Carey the rebound, goes up strong, in and out no good, tip followed by Peter Carey is good. Knock it out, rebound those guys, they came to play tonight. Frontier nine, Palmer two, four minutes to play here in the opening quarter, and the Red Hawk Nation, the sixth man, they are shown up and they are allowed tonight. They've been largely missing all season and they're back now. Lacanico, top of the key, gets a screen. Dylan Tenzar has it. Tenzar puts it to the floor. Working on Sharp, little spin move. Kicks it right side, open three ball. That is no good by Latender. Peter Carey loses his balance as he got the rebound. Out of bounds, no foul call. It'll go back to Palmer with a new shot clock. A lot of contact down low, but you're right. I was surprised there wasn't a call there. Coming through, and the runner, high arcing shot is too high for Bigos. One and done for the Palmer Panthers. Alex Sharp now into the front court. Passes on the right wing to Owen Morse. Evans back to Morse on the right side. Very deep three ball. That one is missing the mark. Kalen Evans battles for the loose ball, but he stepped on the baseline back to the Panthers. Well, that's two rebounds on either end of the floor by Kalen Evans there, and unfortunately he did take a step out of bounds, but... I like the hustle going after everything. Absolutely. He looks good early on. I mean, the effort's there. He is engaged. And that's a good sign for Frontier because he's a good ball player. Top of the key, Dylan Tenzar. Puts it to the floor. Muscle is waiting. He's a big kid. Passes on the right side. Air ball three. Not an air ball, but Lombardi got the weak side rebound. Dylan Tenzar is going to take a tray. That is an air ball. Two horrible deep threes. The ball, though, is off of Frontier, actually. It's going to stay with Palmer. They're not even trying to go inside. Tenzar should not be shooting threes. He's a big man in the middle. He's equal to the size of Karsten Carey. They should be pounding the ball to him. Tenzar got his feet tied up. It goes out of bounds. They're going to say it's off Kale and Evans. So, again, Palmer will keep it. 23 to shoot, 254 on the game clock. Palmer scored only two points, and they trail by seven. They are not in rhythm right now at all. Placanico throws it out deep to Lombardi. Back to Placanico, fakes to three, and then he falls down. He got tripped as he came through. And now a three ball up by Jack Latender, no good. Rebound to Owen Morse, gets it up to Kalen Evans on the right. 
and then takes it across the timeline over to Alex Sharp. Sharp on the left wing, stops there, Peter Carey left corner, swing pass right side, nearly batted down. Owen Morse, the runner off the glass and in. Gotta love what that kid can do with the basketball when he gets a lane like that. 11-2 Frontier, 2.23 to play here in the first quarter. Placanico into the front court, takes it left side, throws over there to Jack Latender, knocked out of bounds by Kalen Evans. It'll stay with Palmer. And they're gonna sub right here as Evan Jusko will check in. And Tim Barrington comes in for the Red Hawks, replacing Owen Morris. Palmer with 17 to shoot. They get it into Dylan Tenzar, throws on the right side. Tenzar gets it back, top of the key. Dylan Tenzar is going to take a high arcing three. That's in and out, no good. Carson Carey gets the rebound again, one and done. If Palmer's going to do that, Chris, they're not going to get a lot of rebounding. They better make these shots. That's exactly right. Because otherwise, it's going to be one and done, and they're probably going to lose big here. On the left side, Kalen Evans fakes to three. Passes over to Sharp. Kalen Evans gets it back. Left corner up fakes. Pulls it back. Step back jumper from 19 is in and out. No good. Battle for the rebound. Peter Carey goes up. Got it. Yeah, Palmer's pretty much conceded the glass at this point. 13 to 2 frontier. They have been utterly dominant so far. Only a minute 30 left here in the opening quarter. Dylan Tenzar. Back it in. He goes, nice look down low, up fake, shot up and in, nicely done there. And going to the line for a chance at a three-point play is Joe Lombardi. Well, that was good patience by Lombardi. He saw Carey was on him, went and get Carey up in the air. Carey bumps him, and he makes the shot, count it to one, smart. Makes it 13 to four, Peter Carey checks out, and into the lineup for Frontier is Owen Wachowicz. Arguably the best sixth man in Western Mass, or at least in the league this year. I think he did a great job off the bench for Frontier all year. On those nights when some of the starters were really having a tough time, he looked really good. Free throw though is no good. Wachowicz gets the rebound. 13-4 Frontiers. We come down to one minute to play here in the first quarter. Alex Sharp on the left wing. Over to Evans. Evans between the circles. Picks it up, throws on the right side to Tim Barrington. They're working well beyond the arc. They get it down low to Carey. Turnaround jumper is around the rim and out. Just spun out on him. Evans gets the rebound, goes up. Rejected down low by Lombardi. Out of bounds. It's going to go back to Palmer. Well, that looked good, but they ignore the fact that Evans out jumped Lombardi to get that rebound. So a nice block by Lombardi. He comes out of the game, though. Junior Nate Latender comes into the lineup. He will replace Lombardi. Lacanico into the front court. Passes on the left side. He goes back to Placanico. Then Intenza. They go top of the key. A rainbow three is up. That is good. Tyler Placanico knocks it down. And here come the Panthers. It's 13-7. It's a two-possession game. 30 seconds left here in the quarter. Nice little run here by the Panthers. Kalen Evans top of the key. Left side to Sharp. Sharp gets it. Wachowicz. He'll take a jumper from 15. That's no good. Tipped out deep. Out of bounds. Back to the Panthers, Tim Burton ended up four rows into the stands trying to get that. Yeah, very close, very close to getting it, but he didn't. Jeff Pardo, number one, just checked in for Palmer, and they're going to get Peter Carey back out there now for Frontier. Let's see who takes a seat. And Kalen Evans checked out, and Owen Morris is back in. And Karsten Carey will get his first break of the night. 19 seconds left here in the first quarter. Frontier leads by six, but they led by 11. A moment ago, it's a 6-0 run right now for Palmer. Six seconds left. Dylan Tenzar left the lane, comes in, got it stolen by Barrington. Three seconds, two, one from midcourt, lets it go. Oh, missed, but just barely. End of one here in South Deerfield. And on the Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard, it's the Frontier Red Hawks 13, the Palmer Panthers 7. Second quarter action next on Bear Country 95.3. Support for FCAT's coverage of high school sports provided by Extreme Networks, customer-driven networking for your business, software-driven solutions that are agile, adaptive, and secure, extremenetworks.com. Attorney Dan Graves, Esquire. In addition to being Deerfield's town moderator, Dan is a practicing attorney. Call his Greenfield Law Office at 773-8706. Bobby C's DJ service. 
voted best mobile disc jockey in the valley for six years running. Book your next party now at bobbycdjservice.com. Holiday Pizza in the center of South Deerfield. Holiday Pizza is the official pizza of Frontier Community Access Television. Webs, America's Yarn Store in Northampton. Kathy and Steve Elkins are longtime supporters of local sports. Visit them at yarn.com. Cheslick's Market. Great coffee, snacks, a full deli, and fantastic lunch specials. Across from the Common in the center of South Deerfield. And they're getting ready to start the second half at Messer Gymnasium in Northfield. And the Pioneer Panthers, the number two seed and the defending Western Mass D4 champions, losing by two to Bay State Academy. 33-31. Again, they begin the third quarter in Northfield. Start of the second quarter here in South Deerfield. Frontier leads 13-7. Alma with the ball, attacking the basket on our right. Dylan Tenzar going up against Peter Carey. Both Carey brothers muscles it up there. No good. Tipped out of bounds. It's off of Palmer. Frontier basketball. Yeah, Frontier's... Um, Palmer's having a tough time even getting a shot off. That's how the good the defense has been for Frontier. Sharp takes it across, picked up by Evan Jusko on the right side. Peter Carey, top of the key, left side it goes to Morris. They dump it down low, Kalen Evans back to Morris. He'll go left baseline, throws it up off the glass, a little bit short on that one, and the rebound taken down by Nate Latender. That was well defended by Palmer. Tyler Placanico into the front court between the circles and a high post, Dylan Tenzar. Dylan, the forward, takes it in, up fakes. Looking all the way around, Jusko in the left corner, shot clock down to 15. Blakanico gets a screen from Tenzar. That's an offensive foul. It's, it's going to go against Tenzar, yeah? Yeah, that was the moving pick. He didn't, never set his feet, so that's a good call. So frontier ball again. They lead by six, 13-7. We're about a minute in here in the second quarter. Winner goes to the cage next week, probably on Tuesday, but again, that'll be decided over the weekend. Kalen Evans, left side to Sharp. Loops a pass down low. Karsten Carey, power move off the glass, no good. Tenzar rips down the rebound. A lot of contact. No foul call, though. This is, this is playoff basketball. You're going to get away with a lot more than you would in the regular season, I think. Lacanico between the circles, gets it to Jesko. Dylan Tenzar throws it over the right side to uh, Jeff Pardo. Tenzar from the foul line. Shot clock down to 10. Lacanico takes it in. Pull up, pop. Back rim no good. Carey clears the board. Get it over to Sharp. So he played a minute and a half here. and We've had no scoring by either side here in the second quarter. Sharp, top of the key. Right side to Morris. Right corner, Peter Carey. Fakes the jumper. Swing pass left side to Sharp. Gets it down low. Alex Sharp gets it back. Return pass. Right side, Owen Morris. Shot clock down to 10. Now Sharp between the circles on a high post. Karsten Carey down to six. Here's Morris. Tried to... Drawn off and try to draw a defensive foul, and that, yeah, it's a shot clock violation. Wait a minute, what's going on here? They never got a shot away. No, that should be a shot that clock. That should violation. be a shot clock violation. Two of the three officials are going to confer right now. Yeah. The, it's, not, it's, I'm not sure what, yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what the debate's about. It took them a long time for what should have been an easy call. Frontier never got a shot away. What, what uh, Owen Morse tried to do with about four seconds left on the shot clock is he kind of up faked and then tried to lean into the Palmer defender trying to draw the foul and never got the shot away. Not a good possession there by the Hawks. So again, for both teams, a very slow start here in the second quarter. Tenzar. Over to Pardo, gets it back to Tenzar, top of the key. Working his way in, little spin move, puts up the shot, misses, and again, one and done for the Panthers as Carey clears the board. Morris gets it back from Sharp, now it's Caleb Evans on the left wing, left corner it goes to Sharp. They can't get the entry pass to Carey. Peter Carey has it right now, top of the key. Right of the lane, and he got hammered. Easy foul call against Palmer. That's Lombardi who muscled him with the hand. <laughs> and the you can't do that chant comes up. Actually, they gave that foul to Pardo. Uh, Jeff Pardo, his first and the second team foul. We've only had three fouls in this uh, game so far. Two for Frontier, one. Uh, two for Palmer and one for Frontier. Alex Sharp on the right side in the corner. 
Passes it down low. Karsten Carey, easy bucket from the right block. Muscled that right in there. He was not going to be denied. Frontier by eight, 15 to seven. At one point, they led 13 to two. Dylan Tenzar gets it back between the circles. Jack Latender gets a screen, couldn't work it. Sharp nearly came up with the steal. Shot clock down to 11. Again, they're running it down every time. Tenzar poked away by Peter Carey. Breaks free all the way through. Got fouled before he could jam it home. Wave off that jam, but a foul on Palmer. And he knew he got fouled before. He didn't jam it anyway, just yeah. to make a point. But that's two great steals triggered by Peter Carey. Quick hands, Carey. Yeah, if you have an opportunity, even after a whistle, to throw one down, you, you know, you can do that. It's psychological. You know, when the other team sees you just, you know, slam one down that easily, it definitely sticks in your mind. There's no doubt about that. In the Karsten carry, Kalen Evans, his jumper from 19 is short, and the rebound taken down by Jack Latender. He runs it up quick. He is a quick player on the left side. Goes baseline, now peels it back as Frontier got back defensively. Jeff Pardo throws on the right side. Chad Beagle's been very quiet. He had a great night against Mahar the other night. Very quiet, though, tonight. Jack Latender. Shot clock down to 10. Try to pass. Here comes Car Peter Curie again. Goes up, and he slams it home. And that time, it does count. That's three steals and a big jam for Peter Carey. 17-7 Frontier, and the Frontier student section's going nuts right now. Lost out of bounds as Nate Latender on the left baseline was being pestered and he dribbled it right out of bounds. We got no answer right now. No answer for Frontier's defense. Frontier on a 4-0 run to begin the second quarter here. We're halfway through the second quarter. Palmer has not scored. They've scored seven points for the night. 17-7 Frontier. Peter Curry, top of the key. Left side, Kalen Evans. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Peter Curry gets it back. Right side to Sharp. Right corner, Morse. Taking it in, puts it up, off the glass and in. Good ball movement, good execution all around. Biggest lead of the night now for the Hawks. They lead by 12, it's 19-7, 3.25 to play here in the first half. Lombardi, passes right side, wide open three ball, no good by Jeff Pardo, and again, it's a one shot possession for Palmer. They're getting no offensive rebounding whatsoever. It's almost like they've conceded the boards at this point. Peter Carey deep on the right side, right corner. Owen Morse, he's going to take a three. He's going to make a three. Talk about shooting threes with accuracy. 22 to 7 Frontier with 2.52 to play here in the first half. Palmer needs an answer badly. Tenzar, Lombardi on the right side. Bigos gets a screen from Tenzar. Trying to get to Lombardi, a steal by Peter Carey. I tell you, he's been a defensive gem tonight. And Frontier could really. Deliver a dagger right here, tipped out of bounds. Nice defensive play there by Chad Bigos. We're going to get Nick Papasino in there now. Bench player. As he checks in for Chad Bigos, who's been strangely quiet tonight. Down low, Karsten Curry, no stopping him, misses that shot, put back, got it, and one. Yeah, they can't, ha they can't hang in the middle. Not like that. that. That was almost too easy for Karsten Carey. Draws the foul. Well, I'll tell you, Chris, this is exactly the intent. You said it just when they came out for the opening tip. This is what you want to see from Frontier. This is what they need to do. Mm -hmm. And they, they've done a defensive number on Palmer. Palmer doesn't seem to have anything other than that weave that they're working, and they can't get a shot off from it. Yeah, the shot clock is getting under 10 every time. They're taking shots they don't really want to take. This has just been a great performance by the Hawks. The free throw, however, is no good. Rebound taken down by Riley Williams, who just checked in. Here comes Jeff Pardo. We're down to 2.20 to play here in the first half, and in the second quarter, Palmer has exactly zero points. Pardo, deep on the left. Again, that shot clock running down again. Kalen Evans comes up with the steal, gets up above the rim, lays it up and in. Great anticipation by Kalen Evans. He knew that pass was coming and he was ready for it. Frontier leads by 19 now. It's 26 to 7. Tenzar dribbles into a double team. Had it, lost it, got it right back. Here comes Pardo on the right side. Shot clock running down again. It's down to 12. Tenzar. 
on the foul line. Left, turns, fires up a jumper. In and out, no good. Carey clears the board. Frontier has outscored them 13 to nothing here in the second quarter. We're down to a minute 28 to play in it. Morse, he'll take a three from the left side. That is no good. Foul though, away from the ball, what do we got? I think it's either Tenzar or Williams that blew out Karsten Carey underneath. So it'll be a possession for the Red Hawks. That was the uh, fifth team foul, second personal foul call by the way on Dylan Tenzar. Oh. Well, they throw an entry pass too high for Karsten Carey, gets batted down, but they get it right back. Alley oop to Kalen Evans who hits. On a feed from Sharp, everything's working. It is, even broken plays are coming out big. 15-0 run here in the second quarter for Frontier. They lead by 21, 28-7. Tenzar from the foul line. It's it back, coming th on through now. Papasino, and now it's Dylan Tenzar again, top of the key. Passes on the right side. Riley Williams forces it up, rejected by Karsten Carey. Comes down Alex Sharp. Up ahead, Alex Morris, one on three break. He takes it through anyway and lays it up and in. It's target practice. It's target practice in South Deerfield. That's all this is. They are blowing the Panthers out of this building and shockingly, they've never called a timeout. Steal now by Evans. He lays it up and in. 32 to seven. If there was a mercy rule, they'd invoke it right about now. I can't believe that they never called a timeout during this entire run. I mean, when they struggled in the first few minutes, yeah, I, psychologically, you don't want to call that early concessional timeout. But now, I mean, you've got to put a stop to it, Chris, at some part. 12 seconds left in the half. Tenzar has it. Eight seconds. Dylan Tenzar, six seconds. He comes in, and he got fouled by Frontier with 5.1 seconds left to play here in the half. They're on the verge of being shut out in the second quarter of a high school playoff basketball game. I don't think that's ever happened, that, to my knowledge. I just, uh, I, if it has happened, it's... That's Not happened here. No, no, no. Wachowicz back in for Frontier. They're going to get Barrington. Uh, no, Barrington's going to stay on the bench. They are actually going to get uh, Gabe Jones-Thompson out there right now. 5.1 seconds left. And they will throw in from the baseline right. They throw it out deep. Three seconds left. Two. Tenzar with one second. Throws up a three. No good. And the Palmer Panthers put up a goose egg in the second quarter, and Frontier with a huge halftime advantage. Halftime here at Goodno Gymnasium, Frontier 32, Palmer 7. The Halftime Report coming up next on Bear Country 95.3. Support for FCAT's coverage of high school sports provided by Extreme Networks, customer-driven networking for your business. Software-driven solutions that are agile, adaptive, and secure. ExtremeNetworks.com Attorney Dan Graves, Esquire. In addition to being Deerfield's town moderator, Dan is a practicing attorney. Call his Greenfield Law Office at 773-8706. Bobby C's DJ Service. Voted Best Mobile Disc Jockey in the Valley for six years running. Book your next party now at bobbycdjservice.com. Holiday Pizza in the center of South Deerfield. Holiday Pizza is the official pizza of Frontier Community Access Television. Webs, America's Yarn Store in Northampton. Kathy and Steve Elkins are longtime supporters of local sports. Visit them at yarn.com. Cheslick's Market. Great coffee, snacks, a full deli, and fantastic lunch specials across from the common in the center of South Deerfield. All right, we are at halftime here at Goodner Gymnasium in South Deerfield, Western Mass Boys Division Three quarterfinal, and the Frontier Red Hawks blowing out the Palmer Panthers so far, at least anyway. Our halftime score is 32 to seven in favor of the Hawks. Chris, how about a 19-0 score for Frontier in the second quarter? That, that is mind boggling. Well, you never want to use the word perfect to describe a performance, but that was about as close to a perfect first half as Frontier has played all season. They came out here storming, did exactly what they needed to do, which was control the pace, and if Palmer is in fact going to live and die by the three, then they're dead right now because that weave is not working. They're trying to use Tenzar on a high post. He's trying to penetrate, and Alex Sharp has taken him down. 
Peter Carey's had four steals, and Carson just, just owned the middle. So, I mean, every single thing is firing for Frontier, and Palmer better have some answers in the second half. They're going to die fast and quiet. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, when Frontier's come up with steals, when the Panthers are trying to get back defensively, they look like they're running in quicksand, and Frontier, they look like a track club, and they're getting a lot of easy buckets on the other end. I mean, you're right. It, it, you know, perimeter shooting, it's been a little spotty, but generally speaking, their offense has been incredible. Yeah, and the, and the thing is, Palmer is going one and out a lot of times. They've conceded the glass almost because of the height of the Carey brothers. But the one that the one shot they're getting, they're having to work 24 seconds, 25 seconds to get it. They're taking shots with four or five seconds left in the shot clock because Frontier is just relentless. And they're obviously Ben has scouted these guys well. They know they're going to shoot from the outside, so that weave is constantly guarded and they can't get loose. It's classic. It's textbook uh, Frontier defense being played out very very well. And if they keep their heads about them, they're going to the cage. Palmer coach Ed Anderson let his guys play through it. Uh, shocking to me. I mean, there were several junctures where you know, I was waiting, almost begging <laughs> from a basketball fan perspective for a timeout. He never called it. So we'll see if they can come up with any kind of adjustment and get back in this one. Take another timeout here. We'll come back at you set for the start of the second half. Frontier 32, Palmer 7. Back after this on Bear Country, 5.3. Back out here at Good New Gymnasium. For the Palmer Panthers, Joe Lombardi has four points. Tyler Plenkenico has three. That's it for the <laughs> wow. scoring for Palmer. For the Frontier Redhawks, Owen Morris and Kalen Evans each have nine points, eight points for Karsten, and six points for Peter Carey, plus four big steals in that first half. And he had two loud dunks, one of which ended up on Chris's score sheet. The other one was waved off. But uh, these Frontier kids, man, I got to tell you, I mean, who knows? Maybe they've been hearing around the community. They've been hearing, you know, in, in basketball circles. Maybe they've heard me, you, and, and Bobby talking about it. You know, we were wondering which Frontier team was going to show up. Well, they have answered in the affirmative. And if this team shows up the rest of the way, nobody's going to beat them. All right, second half is underway. Frontier with the ball with a 25-point lead after a 19-0 run in the second quarter. Carson Carey had it batted down. It goes out of bounds. It'll stay with the Hawks. Well, we'll see what Palmer's made out of. I mean, they could just put it into cruise control and just head home and say, all right, we had a nice season. But something tells me these guys are going to tough it out here. Peter Carey, jumper from the free throw line is good by Kalen Evans, 34-7, 27-point lead. I can't imagine Frontier's going to lose a lead of this size. I would be stunned. I think they've pretty much punched their ticket to the cage next week. Lombardi throws on the right side. Jack Latender on the right side. His jumper is no good. Karsten Carey, skies above everyone. That really should have been a Palmer rebound, but should've Karsten been. just took it away. Yep. He is such a good rebounder. And it's not just his height. He just, he knows how to get it done. Owen Morris is open for three. That is no good. Karsten Carey, the rebound, new shot clock. Kalen Evans, he'll fire up a jumper. That is no good. Rebound taken down by Dylan Tenzar. Taken across now is Tyler Placanico. Throws on the right side of the ten. Nice feed down low and a nice finish by Joe Lombardi down low. Yeah, good little overplay. That's probably the best overplay, best play that Palmer's had tonight. 34-9. They are capable of a run. Remember, Frontier got out to that 13-2 lead, and the next thing you know it was 13-9. I mean, they, you know, they're capable. They can do it. It was 13-7. But it was after that run, they, they stopped scoring literally for the entire remainder of the first half, uh, end of the first quarter and all through the second. Alex Sharp deep in the left, got it to Kalen Evans, fakes the three, comes through on the baseline, sealed off there, back to Peter Carey, all the way through, right side to Moore, shot clock down the one, and puts up the shot, are they going to count it? Yes. Yeah, they got it off, just in the nick of time. Just before the shot clock expired, 36-9 Frontier. And a three-point bomb put up, back rim no good by Chad Bigos. He's been very cold tonight. No look past Bigos. Oh, what a big block down low. Tip, Karsten Carey. Tip fall, though, they go back. Jack Latender will take a three, in and out, no good. They're finally getting some rebounds, and a putback is up and good. That was Lombardi. He's got eight points. He's keeping a minute, somewhat. 
36 to 11. Frontier leads by 25, five and a half to play here in the third quarter. Frontier is in a dogfight at home tonight against Bay State Academy. That game will go final. I mean, unless they have like five overtimes, that game will go final before we're done here. Nope. Frontier with a misplay. They throw the ball away, a rare mistake for them. Dylan Tenzar has it, cross-court pass. Over to Lombardi. And Beagles, rather, feeds to Lombardi, who hits again, and a quick timeout called by Palmer. We'll step aside for a break. Did they get the timeout call? No, 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 no. Day. Yeah, you know we got the foul call, but I thought for a moment they were going to go. It'll be... Is there, I thought now there was a timeout. Yeah, now there's a timeout called by Ben Barshevsky. So we'll step aside for the break. 5.03 to play here in the third quarter. Now the Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard. It's Frontier 36, Palmer 13 on Bear Country. The winner of this game will play either number three seed Narragansett or number six Monument next week at the cage. Right now it looks very much like it'll be Frontier, but Palmer kicking up their heels just a little bit here. And Joe Lombardi now trying to make it a three-point play, and he does. The free throw is good. It makes it 36 to 12. Frontier still leads by two dozen. This play continues now. Palmer with some backcourt pressure, trying to provoke a turnover. This is their chance to, I mean, they're gonna throw everything but the kitchen sink, I guess, at the Hawks in an effort to get back into this one. Left side, Kalen Evans over to Owen Morse. A very deep three is good. He buried it. Way outside for Owen Morse. And the lead back to 25 now, 39 to 14. A little shuffle pass there. Coming through is Jack Latender. Throws on left side to Placonico. Placonico top the key, he'll take a three, Ooh. and that just barely hit the iron front rim. Rebound came down to Morse. That was ugly. Morse on the left wing. That's right where he hit the three a moment ago. He faked it. Peter Carey, his pass though was picked off. To get it up ahead. And Jack Latender hits yeah, from little, the left side. A little bit of sloppiness right now for Frontier. They gotta start luckling down. Don't let this get away from you. Yep. Do what you did in the first quarter. Don't take your foot off the accelerator. You know, you're up by 27. Well, try to make it 37. Three ball right side by Sharp is no good. Battle for the rebound. We get a foul. That's going to go against Frontier. We're going the other way. They got Karsten Carey yep. clearing out down low. That was actually a good call. Ben Barshevsky does not agree with that call. He's talking with uh, Andalos, the official right now. But it wasn't a question of, it wasn't a hard foul. It was just, a, it was a question of getting tangled up. That was all that was. Look at Ben and Andalos. They're, they're talking. They, they, they look kind of similar. They have similar hairstyles. They look they lo look like a guy. Yeah, one guy's wearing a striped shirt though, Jack. Yeah, that's true. And, he, and his, his opinion is the one that will that's prevail. Exactly right. Every time. 340 to play third quarter. 39-16 Frontier. Palmer playing better definitely. Latender's going to take a three. And the ball ended up hitting up top. top. It was board. no good. But we have a foul down low. That is going to go against the Panthers. So back to Frontier now with a 23-point lead. Well, last night, uh, the night before last, Bobby C. and I saw the oh! oh, alley oop to Peter Carey got cleared out down low by Chad Bigos and a foul on Chad. That would have sent this crowd into hysterics <laughs> if he hit that. That was a beautiful pass. Yeah, it really was. As, as I started to say, we saw the Pioneer girls lose an 18-point lead on the road down against Pope Francis, and stunningly, their season is over. They, they were the better team for 32 minutes of a basketball game. For about 27 minutes, they were the best team, and they lost it late. All right, Pioneer, good news. They're going back to the cage, the defending champions. They're going to try to keep it going as they win 74-63 to over Bay State Academy. Free throw, no good. Rebound comes down, Karsten Carey no good. Karsten gets it back, puts it up, no. Peter Carey, no. Peter Carey again, and a foul on Palmer. Dylan Tenzar grabbed the ball and just smacked both palms on it out of frustration because they could not get the rebound. They cannot do anything against these guys. That's four uncontested rebounds, and Palmer needs to talk it over. 
will take the timeout. 3.17 to play here, third quarter. Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard, Frontier 39 and Palmer 16. Well, as we mentioned on the pregame show on that game on the night of January 21st here at Goodno Gymnasium, Frontier needed an 18-4 fourth quarter to win by seven. 49 to 42, so that'll tell you right right now, okay, they scored 49 points for that entire game. They have 40 points right now for, the, for this game, midway through the third as Peter Carey hits the first free throw. And Peter will get one more. It's in the air, front rim no good, tipped out by Karsten Carey. And they, did they get, yeah, that's a foul on Karsten going over the back. Yeah, went over the back, trying to tip it back out. That's two quick ones on him, and there's three on Dylan Tenzar, so that bears watching. The Frontier still up comfortably. The lead is 24, 40 to 16, as we come down to the three-minute mark here in the third quarter. Coming all the way through, a nice feed. Oh, just unable to finish, but they get the offensive rebound, and Tenzar goes up, misses the bunny. Lombardi missed, and then Tenzar missed. Not a lot going right for the Panthers here tonight. Sharp, deep on the left wing. Cross court pass to Barrington. Tim fakes the three, pulls it back. Walkowitz is going to take a tray. That is no good. Way too strong. Rebound taken down by Bigos. Goes left side. Three pointer put up and in by the freshman, Jack Latender. Makes it 40 19. Now they get a steal. Bigos passes over to Tenzar. And it got kicked out of bounds. It'll stay with the Panthers with a new 30-second shot clock. Well, they, they have to just sort of take it down in steps. They're trailing right now by 21. Try to get it down to around 15 or so, then get it to single digits. Three-pointer put up. That was a brick no good, but they tip it out deep. Dylan Tenzar gets it back. Hands to Placotico on the right side. Pass a tip stolen by Wachowicz. Nice job there. Nearly stolen back though by Palmer. Here comes Tim Barrington into the front court left. Stops on the wing. Passes to Wachowicz foul line on the right side. Coming through. Owen Morse. They get it over. Barrington takes the three. Shot clock down to 15. Barrington. Wrap around pass over to Alex Sharp. Into the right corner for Morse. Morse up fakes. And what do we got? It's going to be a foul. Yeah, foul on Palmer. on Palmer away from the ball. Didn't see exactly what happened. It was uh, We were screened by the other official. But that foul was on the point guard, Tyler Placanico. Barrington will inbound on the baseline right. Into Caleb Evans. Step back three is short. Hustles to get his own rebound. Nope, it stepped. Uh, it went on the uh, baseline there. So back to the Panthers. But Frontier still leading by 21. They led 32 to seven at halftime. After outscoring Palmer 19 to nothing. Yeah, 19 zip in the second quarter. Placanico, Bigos on the left side. Nice dish down low, turnaround shot up and good, up and no good by Lombardi. And a foul on Bigos as he slapped the arm. You probably heard it with our crowd mic, slapped the arm of Karsten Perry. Well, that's the only way to slow him down is to try and muscle him a little bit. And that time it was just a flagrant foul. I they didn't call it flagrant, but it was a pretty hard foul. Yeah. The foul was actually on Chad Bigos. That it, uh, well, I thought it was on 23. But it was no, on, it was on Bigos. It was on Bigos. Okay. That is his third, by the way. So he's in a bit of a bind right now. Barrington takes it across. Picked up there by Jusko. Jones Thompson tried to get it down low to Carson Carey. It's bad away. That pass was not there. Tried to kind of thread a needle and it didn't work. Coming down to a minute to play here in the quarter. Tipped out of bounds off Kalen Evans. Palmer will inbound 21 to shoot, 105 on the game clock. They trail by 21. Peter Carey in, Karsten Carey out. Evan Jesko will inbound. Gets it right back, he'll take a three. Hits the side of the backboard. It may have been partially blocked by Wachowicz. Peter Carey got the rebound. In the backcourt, Tim Burrington runs it across into the front court. Nice job. Gets it to Kalen Evans. Wachowicz from the foul line. Back to Evans. Up fakes on the three. Takes it through, and a blocking foul is called against Palmer. Well, he got popped. 
who they get. That's going to be, yep, Lombardi. Lombardi, a second personal, sixth team foul. So one more, and Frontier will be in the one and one. Kalen Evans on the left side. Peter Carey back to Evans. Takes the three, goes baseline again, off the glass, no good. Rebound, Jones Thompson puts it up and in. Yep. Dave Jones Thompson stayed where he wanted to be, good position. 42-19 Frontier, 30 seconds left to play here in the third quarter in South Deerfield. Dylan Tenzar looking for some help. Beagles has it on the right side. Over to Tenzar, shot clock at 15. Dylan tries to work his way in, does so. Sealed off there, traveling. Yeah. He wasn't going anywhere and Peter Carey had him pretty well blocked on the baseline. No choice but to take an extra step on that one. Nate Latender, some height and some girth in there and Dylan Tenzar is going to get a well-deserved rest on the bench. He's been working hard tonight with limited success unfortunately for him. Kalen Evans, no look pass, Walkowitz puts up a shot way off. And the rebound taken down by Joe Lombardi. Four seconds left here in the third. Right side, jumper at the buzzer. Blocked, another block. That one by Walkowitz. End of three here in South Deerfield. And on the Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard, it's Frontier 42, Palmer 19 on Bear Country 95. Support for FCAT's coverage of high school sports provided by Extreme Networks. Customer-driven networking for your business. Software-driven solutions that are agile, adaptive, and secure. ExtremeNetworks.com Attorney Dan Graves, Esquire. In addition to being Deerfield's town moderator, Dan is a practicing attorney. Call his Greenfield Law Office at 773-8706. Bobby C's DJ Service. Voted Best Mobile Disc Jockey in the Valley for six years running. Book your next party now at bobbycdjservice.com. Holiday Pizza in the center of South Deerfield. Holiday Pizza is the official pizza of Frontier Community Access Television. Webbs, America's Yarn Store in Northampton. Kathy and Steve Elkins are longtime supporters of local sports. Visit them at yarn.com. Cheslick's Market. Great coffee, snacks, a full deli, and fantastic lunch specials across from the Common in the center of South Deerfield. After the game, we'll have our post-game show, Helena Chemical Player of the Game, and we'll get you set for tomorrow night's girls D3 quarter, Hampshire at Greenfield. Palmer actually outscored Frontier 12-10 in the third, but they really needed to outscore Pi uh, Frontier something like 23-4 to have a realistic shot at it, but we'll see what happens. Maybe I'm selling these Panthers short. Placanico. Between the circles, hands to Jesco. Evan passes over the right side, goes out of bounds, and that is off of Palmer. Jeff Pardo pleading his case. And, oh man, yeah. Ed Anderson, the Palmer coach, is very, very sure that they just missed that call. Perhaps they did. I think they might have, because it looked like... Uh, Alex Sharp. You're getting left corner to Peter Carey from 17. That is good. What a night he's had. Yep, he has. He just absolutely drained that one. Nobody near him. 44-19. And just like that, the lead is 25 again. Now a steal. Nice play there by Sharp. Here comes Kalen Evans. Kalen comes all the way through. Pass though batted down. And here comes Palmer back the other way. They loop a pass up ahead. Latender. Fade away three is an air ball. An attempted save on the baseline by Jeff Pardo. And it goes back to Frontier. Yeah, this, this Frontier six man, they're, they're relentless. I mean, you're lead, leading by 25, and they're just, they're not taking the foot off the, uh, no, the accelerator either. Stop either. <laughs> they're one of the great student sections in local basketball. Oh. oh, missing the dunk down low was Karsten Carey. But now Peter Carey has it. He's going to go through. Swoops through, no, but a foul called. Uh, against Palmer. Real like a big bird swooping through the lane there, but Peter Carey set himself a night. He's got uh, nine points, four steals, and has been an absolute force in the front court, along with his brother Karsten. Free throws coming up. Peter Carey's first free throw is on the way, and it's around the rim and in. And he will get one more. 
Substitution, they're going to get Lombardi back in there. He's had a reasonably successful night on a night that his team has been pretty much blown out here. One more for Peter Carey. On the way, that one is good as well. 46 to 19, and now it is a 27 point lead, biggest of the night. So you can pretty much book it. Frontiers going to the final four. Laconico. No look pass down low. Lombardi throws it out deep. Latender. Shot clock at 12. Latender. All the way through Jack. Little bunny shot is teardropper is no good. One more running it up for the Hawks. Double team right in front of the frontier bench. Got it. On the right side to Kalen Evans. Karsten Carey from the foul line. Passes over to Evans. Kalen, right side. All the way through right baseline. They try to feed it. To Morse coming through, picked up though by Tenzar. And Conoco has it at the center court circle. Six minutes to play in the basketball game, all frontier tonight. Dylan Tenzar going in against Karsten Carey, muscling his way through, traveling again. Yeah, that's a couple times that's happened. Tenzar is very frustrated as he should be. The Carey brothers are making his life miserable every time he gets into the paint. Well, Dylan Tenzar is on a long list of pivot men in Western Mass basketball that have been frustrated by the Carey brothers. Yeah. And now Carson's going to get called for steps yep. as he tried to get it to his brother, but he took that one little slide step. That's exactly what happened. And either it was going to be a travel or it was going to be a backcourt violation because he caught that pass straddling the center line. You can't do that either. But yeah, Dylan Tenzar, you know, he could talk to guys like Anthony Peterson and others. And Anthony's a good player, but you know, when he goes up against Karsten, it's a, it's a, it's a tough situation. But Karsten won't be here next year. Anthony will be back for the Thunder. Oh, on the right side, Jeff Pardo tried an entry pass. Did they get the timeout call? They did. We'll step aside, 5.33 to play in this one. Frontier by 27. It's 46-19 on the Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard. They inbound the ball. Nice play. They get it down to Joe Lombardi who hits and he got fouled. And Lombardi now to the line for a chance at a three-point play. Well, he's got 13 points. 13 of his team's 21. So Lombardi yeah. has been the best player out there scoring-wise. For Palmer. Yeah, he's been pretty effective, but everybody else, it has been a big time struggle. A foul against uh, Frontier, by the way, it was against Peter Carey. And the 14th foul on the Hawks. Free throw is up, no good. And Alex Sharp gets the loose ball for the Hawks. He'll run it up, 5.28 to play. Frontier 46, Palmer 21. Kalen Evans, oh, he's left wide open for three. He knows what to do with that, right, Chris? He yeah, just hit I the mean, three. How do you leave him that open? So let's see, are they, the shot was good. We have a whistle and a foul. Would they call the three and a foul? It was a foul away from the ball, I think. Yeah, that, so yeah, the three will definitely count. Yeah, they put it up, 49-21. And now two of the three officials will confer to sort out yeah, now they're going to send Karsten to the line. So this is a, <laughs> well, he's going to get two free throws. This is a chance for a five-point trip for the Hawks. If you can believe, actually, they're into the one-and-one one here. So he can make two in a rare five-point trip. Front end of the one-and-one one is good. One more for Karsten Carey. Wow. And also, that's four fouls on Tenzar. Most of the offense has moved through him. Although the scoring has been done by Lombardi, the offensive sets have started with him. And he hits the second as well. That's it. And that's a very rare five-point trip on that possession. A three made by Evans and a foul on that. And Carey made two free throws. 51-21, 30-point lead. Frontier utterly dominant here tonight. Three-point bomb put up, and it rattles in for Tyler Placanico. Yeah, that was way outside, but a little too, little too late, I think. Oh, yeah. This one's over. 51-24. Little teardropper is blocked. Getting it back though. Karsten Carey banks it home. And what do we got? We have a whistle right after that. They will count the bucket, 53-24. It's gonna be a foul after the fact, I think. Oh, they were looking at uh, Morse. 
Yep, no, there's no blood there, so we can stay in the lineup. 440 to play, 53-24 Hawks. Tens are top of the key. Passes on over. Lombardi on the right side to Pardo. Jeff rejected down low. Pick your carry, brother. One of them got oh, it. Oh, man. I think that was Peter, actually. Peter, very strong candidate for Helena Chemical Player of the Game. We'll reveal that on the postgame show. Peter feeds it to Karsten and Mr. Carey, senior, hits it up and in. 55-24, 31-point lead now. Beautiful pass, but Lombardi unable to finish. Wanted to get the foul call, did not get it. Well, so much for this being a unusual two versus ten. Nothing unusual <laughs> about it. Well, it, it, this is unusual even for a 10 versus a 2. This is this is a 2 against a 15 type game. Yeah. It, that's what this is. Nice pass down low. Didn't oh, go. Morris unable to finish. Some nice passing by the Hawks as well. On the left side. Oh, another block by Karsten Carey off a three-point attempt by Jack Latender. Karsten Carey's out there blocking threes with a 31-point lead. <laughs> Papacino checks in for uh, Tyler Placanico. He just hit a three a moment ago. And also back out there is Riley Williams. And they throw it out, tip. Sharp with the steal. Yeah, it's amazing. This was a really tight game back uh, the 21st of January, so a little over a month ago, but Looks like Palmer doesn't even belong on the same floor tonight. As well, Frontier, if you, if you Carson Carey just got fouled, by the way. That that game was the start of what I call the Frontier late season swoon. Yeah. That was when they started to have problems, and they obviously righted the ship because this is a totally different situation what we're seeing tonight. Well, that's what we like to say as the, in the media, what fans like to say, what coaches like to say when the tournament comes. You just okay, it's a new season. If you've if you've done well down the stretch, forget about it. It means nothing in the postseason. If you struggled, same thing. Forget about it. It means nothing. As good as your most recent game. And right now, Frontier, really good. Well, you don't want to look too far ahead, but a Frontier Sabbath final Ooh, boy. would be un <laughs> unbelievable. I mean, that would be Well, that's amazing. what everybody wants. Karsten missed the second free throw. Peter got the rebound. Back to Karsten. Morse will drive throw hits from the left side. Uncontested, by the way. Timeout Frontier, 3-10 to play in this one. Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard, Frontier 58, Palmer 24. Three-pointer put up on the left side by Palmer, in and out, no good. Gabe Kuczynski got the rebound. We're going to have uh, Barrington's out there with Kuczynski, Norminger, Jones Thompson. And Robinson, so they have uh, definitely changed up. The starters uh, done for the night, but a job well done. Nurminger is going to get called for a travel as he tried to pass after he jumped with the basketball. Yeah, he got hung up, unfortunately for him. But yeah, this is this is basically the second team and smart move. Get the guys out of there. They did their job. Oh boy, did they ever! They, uh, you know, yeah. You mentioned during our halftime show. There's probably no such thing as a perfect half of basketball by any basketball team because you know you have an errant pass, missed shots, but man, pretty darn close, Chris. Yep. They are just phenomenal. Left no doubt in this one in the opening jump. And the lead is 34 points. That that in a quarterfinal round game, that the fact that one team leads by 34 is just astonishing. Palmer running it down again, five seconds to shoot, and the jumper is way off. That had no chance for Nick Papacino. And we have a foul called. Should be on Williams. Yep. And a substitution. Checking out Chad Bigos. Again, he had a big effort with three threes against Mahar, but didn't happen for him tonight. Alex Gradkowski checks in for Palmer. 2.07 to play. Again, Pioneer won tonight. After a very close game most of the way, they pull away late. Panthers win it over Bay State Academy, 74-63. Jones Thompson made the first. 
And Gabe will get one more here. Dips, shoots, back rim, no. Rebound pulled down by Palmer. Two minutes to play, 59-24, a 35-point lead. I, again, I just can't believe that. And working around the top of the key. 15 seconds left to play. Basically, they're not playing with urgency. They're just trying to run some set plays here. And a foul is going to be called against Jones Thompson as he put a hip against Nate Latender. Still not shooting, though. That's only the fifth team foul. It's been a very clean game by Frontier in terms of fouls. Yep. 59-24. New shot clock. And Frontier is going to get their last couple of guys into the game here momentarily. Ball goes out of bounds. Back to the Red Hawks. Uh, These are JV Collops. Yeah. These are see JV Collops get into a, a tournament game. Ethan Michon just checked in to the lineup. And who else got out Sean there? Sean Richter. Sean Richter. The Richter scale. Oh, Rick, there, there's that, but Richter to me, Richter to me, is that's a hockey name. Yes, it is. It's, there's been a few Richters who have been on the ice. Richter has it right now. It's it back to Mashan. Coming through, Gabe Kaczynski, and they're going to get steps called on Mashan. Oh. He made a nice drive and put it in, but he traveled before that. Too bad, because that was a nice little scoop shot. Ethan is a sophomore. One fifteen to play, 59 to 24. That's a really low scoring output, but there is some historical precedence. I'll get to that in a moment. Blocked down low by Richter, but a foul. Um, I can't remember what year it was. It was a while ago, but Palmer came to Greenfield for what was then a Division II tournament game when we had only the three divisions, not four. Palmer comes to the old Nichols gym. They score 20 points for the game in a tournament game. 20. Greenfield, I can't remember how many did. This is when Scott Thayer coached them. This is when Greenfield was really good. First free throw was no good. Second one missed as well, but Palmer gets the offensive rebound, and the leaner is good. Nicely done there by Riley Williams. 59 to 26. You'd love to see Palmer get a couple of buckets here and at least get it to 30. And the it's all over chant. We heard the warm up the bus chant earlier. We heard you can't do that about 10 times tonight. Robinson, B Rob misses. Richter, tip follow, no good. And it comes down to Palmer. All right, they're four points away from 30 for the game as they try to make it at least a little more respectable. They dump it down low. They try to get it to Riley Williams. Gabe Kuczynski has it on the right side, finds a seam, and the runner is good. And the crowd loves it. This play there by Gabe. This is amazing. 61 to 26. And the singing begins. Steal by Kuczynski. Puts it up, oh. missed the layup with five seconds left. Two seconds, one, three point at the buzzer, no good. Final score, Frontier 61, Palmer 26, and the Red Hawks are going to the final four at the cage next week. We'll take a timeout at our post game show coming up next on Bear Country 95.3. coverage of high school sports provided by Extreme Networks, customer-driven networking for your business, software-driven solutions that are agile, adaptive, and secure, extremenetworks.com. Attorney Dan Graves, Esquire. In addition to being Deerfield's town moderator, Dan is a practicing attorney. Call his Greenfield Law Office at 773-8706. 
Bobby C's DJ service. Voted best mobile disc jockey in the valley for six years running. Book your next party now at bobbycsdjservice.com. Holiday Pizza in the center of South Deerfield. Holiday Pizza is the official pizza of Frontier Community Access Television. Webs, America's Yarn Store in Northampton. Kathy and Steve Elkins are longtime supporters of local sports. Visit them at yarn.com. Cheslick's Market. Great coffee, snacks, a full deli, and fantastic lunch specials. Across from the Common in the center of South Deerfield. Back out here at Good No Gymnasium, Chris Collins, Jeff Terrell. Our studio producer is Dave Reno. We've gone final from Good No Gymnasium and the Frontier Red Hawks. Knock off the Palmer Panthers 61 to 26 in lopsided fashion in front of the home crew. And that means they now go on to the semifinals and no gimme at all as they play the winner of the Monument Mountain Narragansett game, which is going on tonight. And I don't know, Jeff, uh, that's going to be tough. Whoever, well, uh, gets, whoever gets that win. Well, we're at the point of the tournament now where uh, you know when you get when you get to the final four. No, when you get to the final four, you're you're playing a good team no matter what. So yeah, Narragansett, the Warriors, uh, of course, out of Baldwinville, uh, the Warriors, really good basketball team, and Monument's one of those um, you know teams from the Berkshires that you, you always have to uh, answer for them. So it should be very very interesting. But well, I tell you what. It, it, be hard to think that they can bring that same level of effort again. If they can do it again, they're going to be really, really tough to beat these Frontier Red Hawks. Well, like I said, this is this is a perfect example of what I've been talking about. When this team decides that they're going to play basketball, the only ones that can beat them are themselves, and that's what's happened down the stretch. That loss to Smith Academy, one could argue Smith played a great game, but Frontier didn't play Frontier basketball. Tonight they did, and you saw the result. I mean, an absolute blowout performance. And now they go on to the, uh, the cage, and it's going to be a lot of fun to see how they match up against a, an opponent that they have not seen yet. And the defending Western Mass Division Four champions, the Pioneer Panthers, they're back in the Final Four as well. It was a struggle, nip and tuck with Bay State Academy, but they end up winning it up at the Mess Hall in Northfield, 74 to 63. But uh, first, we'll wrap up things here. Chris, we'll run the final numbers of this relatively easy, surprisingly easy victory for the Red Hawks. It is surprisingly easy, but it's a W, a big one for the Frontier Hawks. Let's start with Palmer. Our leading scorer for Palmer was Joe Lombardi with 13 points. Played a pretty good game. Six points for Tyler Planconico, five for Jack Latender, and two for Riley Williams. For the Frontier Red Hawks, 16 points for Owen Morris, including two threes. 15 for Karsten Carey, 11 for Peter Carey. 14 for Kalen Evans, 3 for Gabe Jones-Thompson, and 2 points at the end for Gabe Gachinski. 61-26 is the final. Time now to reveal the Helena Chemical Player of the Game, and when you win 61-25, to uh, obviously you're going to have many candidates, but it wasn't like there was one guy that scored 30 tonight, but there was one guy who in the first half when Frontier took control of this basketball game in the second quarter, it almost seemed like there were three of this one guy out there, but there was only one Peter Carey, and he was the man tonight. Yeah, he was. And I think the first half especially, he had four steals, a couple of thunderous jams, one of which didn't count but sent a message right away to Palmer. that, And that's a psychological thing you do, and, and, it, and it works. I mean, he's, when he gets out there, he doesn't look like much in terms of size. He's very tall but very lean and very thin. But, man, when he decides to play position and when he decides to go up, you're not going to stop him. And the, what I think what impressed me was his defense tonight. The way he poked the ball loose at four steals, I think it was the most complete player out there for Frontier, and he wins the T-shirt. All right, so uh, again, uh, congratulations to Peter Carey of Frontier, the Helena Chemical Player of the Game. But Chris, you were absolutely right what you were saying a moment ago before, uh, before we took the break. Frontier, great performance. You did just about everything right. Savor it for just for tonight, and then forget about it because you're going to have a tough game next week at the cage, no matter what. That's right. It's going to be interesting, and, and, and I don't know. I mean, Frontier has not fared well against Berkshire teams. However, they've never faced Narragansett. This is the first time that Narragansett has been in this field. So, right. Um, and we've heard tell from folks at Murdoch that Narragansett's the real deal. So I don't know what's going to happen, but it's going to be an entertaining game to watch, and we're going to be happy to be there and we'll bring it to you. All right. Final score tonight, one more time here at Goodnow Gymnasium in South Deerfield. On the Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard, Frontier 61, 
Pioneer 26 for Chris Collins and for Dave Reno. I'm Jeff Terrell. Thanks for listening and have a great night in bear country.